kind of in the back of my head, I feel like I always have this mystery where like a new version of Kudanen comes out and like the models get like way faster with just a yeah. better library. And, and, you know, I think about like what a model does, like a convolution or like, you know, a matrix multiplication. It seems so simple to me. <laughs> it, se- it just seems, and but that's kind of how it seems like, cause I feel like yeah, I come from I more of a math background and I'm just like, how could, you know, like many years in to like making a this library, like could in years, how could there be a 20% speed yeah. up on a matrix multiplication? Like what's that's going on? That's a big question. Yeah. Great question, Lucas. And all right. So uh, we should take a whiteboard <laughs> out and I'll show it to you. So, because then it gets even closer to, to my world. Let's, let's, let's think about computer architecture for a second, right? So let's say that you, you are an, an execution engine, like a processor or a core of a GPU, right? So you have to grab, let's start with one reason. Like you have to grab data from somewhere in memory, right? So turns out that computers are, you know, memory is organized in ways that depending on where the data is in memory, which actual address physically in your memory it is, it gives you much better performance than others, like by a huge margin, right? Mm-hmm. So because depending on how you lay it out the data, you can actually make the most use of the wires between your memory and your processor, between your cache and your actual execution engine in the silicon itself. Mm-hmm. But figure out where that goes becomes a, a combinatorial problem because not only you have to choose where the data structure go, but also when you have a bunch of nested loops that implement your convolution, you have to choose, like if you have a four uh, deep nested loop, in which order should you execute them? Any order is valid. Which mm-hmm. order should you execute them? And then within those, you might want to traverse, like what size of blocks are you going to traverse that? Mm-hmm. So, and all of that is highly dependent on the, on the parameters of your convolution. Mm-hmm. That's just, I'm just speaking convolution, right? So yeah. even just general uh, matrix m- multiplication, right? So a uh, long story short, for any given operator, there's literally potentially billions of ways in which you can compile the same bit by bit equivalent program in terms of outputs, but mm-hmm. one of them is going to be potentially a thousand times faster than, than, than the slowest one. So picking the right one is hard. Often this is done today by human intuition and some amount of automatic tuning called auto-tuning, right? So what's happening in CoDNN as you see your model gets faster is that you have NVIDIA can afford a large number of programmers, right? So a lot of really talented software engineers, they, they observe where the models are going. There's some models that matters to them. They're going to go, they're going to look at the models, see the parameters of all of the operators, how they're stitched together, and then they're going to start tuning the libraries to make sure that they do better data layouts, they make better loop ordering, they do better tiling of how the data structure works, they choose the direction which they're traversing, the data structures, and so on. And that's just one type, that's just one operator, but now models, operators talk to other operators, right? So that's why there's something mm-hmm. called operator fusion. If you fuse two operators, for example, like mm-hmm. a matrix multiplication, a convolution to a single operator. Uh-huh. So now you can generate code in a way that you can keep data as close to your processing engine as much as possible. So you make much better use of your memory hierarchy. And that's yet another significant performance bump. If you're enjoying Gradient Descent, you might actually be interested in the main thing we do here at Weights and Biases, which is making tools to help with machine learning. If you're building models and you want to track the models that you build, or you want to track the data sets that go into the models you build, or you want to track the models that you deploy into production, you can do all that with weights and biases. And best of all, it's free for personal and academic use. Go check us out at WMB.com and let me know how it goes.